hello this is Hi. gen wars we're yes. watching transformers generation one in a combative conversation uh thank you for sticking around and seeing all the previous content and if you haven't there's lots of episodes because we are watching every episode of g1's transformers and comparing it to Beast Wars, the uh, millennial introduction to Transformers. So this is the Gen X versus the millennials, the filthy, dirty, no good millennials. And I have Nick from Fire Hazard 508 Creations. He's here. How are you doing? Yes. Doing good. Doing good. We had a bit of a little bit of a life break and uh, from the show f for a while. Work and projects and whatnot. Uh, as you see, I might... I might be playing some games over on Funky Games, so we're getting a little blasphemous going, um, and then I get to go Raz Steven while he plays a little Pokemon uh, Scarlet and whatnot, so we've we've been juggling a lot of things. Lots so, going we, on. Nick has this been reviewing got G.I. Joes, for <laughs> all that good stuff, yeah, but we're Oh, here. and then all my G.I. Joes, and, but we're going to get back into it now. We're into it, and so we are on episode four of uh, episode four correct g1 transformers and nick has included the lovely links that you can watch along with us so we highly recommend you watch the episode along with us we're putting it all Absolutely. out there um because we want the honest like reaction to these two ips um that are really trying to bring in audiences to the transformers line so uh, we're doing a lot of debate and discussion on the merits of the shows, so we want you involved. Make sure you like and subscribe. Put down in the comments your opinions on all things Transformers. Tell us we're wrong. That's our favorite thing. When, when we're wrong, yeah. we want to know about it. So, so, so tell us how we're goofing up in the comments below. So we appreciate that. Nick, give us the countdown. All right. Everybody pull up your episode four, G1. Let's go on go. How about okay. that? So I'll go okay. three, two, one, go. Okay. Ready? For it. Three, two, one, go. I will say, just right out the gates, I really miss yep. the airbrush like aesthetic from this era. And it, it even goes into things like the uh, Star Wars like movie posters and stuff. I really, really miss that. Um, I think it's something that's not really emulated too much in modern day, uh, especially with like AI art and um, digital like replication of art styles. Like something about like that airbrush aesthetic just hasn't translated to common era, in my opinion. As no, much as I tried, got left. it yeah. kind of got left. It got left behind, which is it is kind of sad. Yeah, it's kind of sad that we didn't carry a lot of that forward. I mean, some of the AI stuff maybe, but other than that, like it just kind of got left back then, and that's that's where it got left. Somebody Something. Left it on the table. <laughs> uh, we're gonna let this play out, but but something I wanted to bring up on the airbrush thing, like the, when you went to like the mall, like the airbrush, yeah. like T-shirt, like sh stops and all that stuff. Oh, that had yeah. like the Tweety Bird and Sylvester, like airbrush shirts That's something that got left back in the 90s too i miss that i miss that i would love to see that at like uh they, they don't even do like street fests or like carnivals or anything like that anymore I, I i rarely see those going on yeah i haven't been to anything like that in a while but uh, i mean i'm assuming there's still a an art form of it out there we just yeah. don't see it a lot i would want it oh so, so uh, Cliff Jumper is suffering from PTSD. Is that what we just saw? A little bit. He's a little. He's a little jumpy. He's a little <laughs> jumpy. Um, also, okay. So, in watching this, I was like, "How long? How much time has passed?" Mm -hmm. And they was one line of dialogue. They said a few months. So a few months had passed from when they shot down Megatron. And what I noticed is Megatron and the guys apparently build a whole city down under the water with their ship is and this is something i actually wanted to bring up how long how okay we know they're robots they they do their how much time does it take for them to build stuff like because they're robots does it take a shorter amount of time to build stuff yes uh, well, okay. And also, they went down with a significant amount of energon as well. So I'm assuming, like, they had, like, the full, like, nexus of 
like we're we're just gonna like hide out down here, get really established, uh, like really set a, up a like satellite encampment. Um, while oh, it's we, a whole like, city. Yeah. If you, if we. Uh, well, I mean, in comparison to... to Cybertron, like it's yeah. it's, it's True. small. But it was I I stopped it, rewound it, and I was like, wait a minute, was there a full city down there? <laughs> yes. Um. If I remember correctly, there's, like, a substantial amount of Decepticons. Like, there's more Decepticons because you've got all the Seekers, I think the Wreckers, and, like, the core Megatron's, like, entourage on the ship. Uh, they're in this... Well, up to this point and in this episode, we only see f four of them. We see Starscream, Megatron, Shockwave, uh, Soundwave... Um, uh, he was the um, he w maybe he was his tape one of his tapes. Um, oh, Prowler. Well, Skywarp's with them and stuff too. Because because I'm trying to think back like to the trilogy of episodes. Yes. There's like objectively more Decepticons than Autobots in these engagements. Even though there seems to be like quite a few Autobots. We actually have more Autobots in this one. There okay. seems to be less Decepticons. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was actually curious. I was counting them as they kind of popped up and I was like nope there's only four there's only four again okay there's five then there's four again and like where are where are they all <clears throat> so yeah, so see this. perceptively the Decepticons have taken substantial loss loss exactly okay at least that's what I'm we're led to believe or maybe they just didn't because I guess we never really yeah I guess they did have a lot of uh we never saw them repair everybody Mm -hmm. during the big fight in the first one in the first set of three episodes okay yeah so there's, I guess it would be the first episode there's two so we've definitely got sky we've got sky warp and one two three just yeah oh, okay yeah and then there's mm. soundwave is there yeah um and then there's one other and I mean if you want to count ravage and um What's the bird's name? Why can't I think of... Laserbeak. Laserbeak, thank you. This is supposed That's to be totally your funny. fight. This is your... I know, I was like, wait a minute. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, this also, like, I keep getting Ironhide and Ratchet mixed up because in the right. Bayverse movies, Ironhide is, looks completely different. And this one, they're just, it's red and white and... You know, figure out which one it is. De definitely a product of the time, but I love how recolors have been adapted, like in, in newer IPs. Especially the Bayformers do a great job in character mm. design. Uh, I don't yes. think anyone ever has a problem with character design as far as look and feel of the Bay Bayverse uh, characters. I think I think there was a lot of like a uh, uh, pushback as to. These are very simple designs where he went over the top every, uh, you know, I guess it, we're putting them in the real world. So it's a real car. So it has a lot of real hoses and tubes and pipes and stuff. So all of that has to kind of move and adjust with them. Yeah, I where actually got to meet one of the concept designers for the Bayverse Transformers when I was uh, at, at university, and it, it was really cool. He, he he did a lot of the... I, I believe he did Ironhide and the Dinobots at the time. Uh, I need to go back and see if I can find the, it. And Nick will put it up if I can find him. I can't remember his the name. The Dinobots from the fourth Last movie or whatever it was? or something like that. But at the time, that hadn't been released yet. So he was just, like, really kind of showing us early stage stuff, and it was a private environment. And, like, I definitely don't want him getting in trouble for, like, NDA stuff. Uh, but not yeah, that it matters it like now. The NDA <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, he, he was showing us his private portfolio and his, like, layered, like, arts and stuff, and it was really cool. And the amount of That's effort awesome. that continues to go into the the cinematic transformer designs like i'm all about um i like i'm not here for the simplicity and and, and then maybe that's kind of where like the divide of generations comes through but um these simple designs have not aged well um where if you go back and look at the the bayformers designs it's been 10 years plus 15 years almost 
Yeah, so they hold long? off really good. Yeah, because didn't the first? Because because I rem- I think Dark of the Moon came out in 2010. Because the, the Lincoln Park song is 10 years old. I th- I don't know. I I don't know. We have to do yeah, some, it's, it's been a hot minute. <laughs> fact checking, <laughs> fact checking, Nick. <laughs> Just like um, you can check out the I, Funky Store, Funky Dot Store. Ooh, I'm gonna plug right this there. domain. <laughs> you 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 check that out. Uh, we got cool merch there, like uh, the I Need Healing T-shirt. It's a, a new season of Overwatch. I'm sure if you're watching this at at release, so uh, you, you you need some cool shirts to commemorate the time. So Funky Dot Store, check that out. Um, something I wanted to bring up here, and this is kind of a through line, or it, not a through line, but a uh, thing I was noticing with both of these episodes, is that Optimus is very irresponsible in mm-hmm. both of these episodes. Uh, he sends Spike off on a mission with Bumblebee to go spy on them. He's a human being. Like, he's going to get smushed. <laughs> well, 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 I will say that kind of the arc of the first three episodes or the Transformers, like, initial movie set um, mm-hmm. was about Optimus treating the humans as equals and seeing them as, true. like, allies, like, true allies. So I don't have as much qualm with Optimus's characters as in trusting the humans to carry out missions because they're kind of opting into it as, like... I mean, we've given you plenty outs. Uh, I mean, he's taken both of them to. There's the the whole plan starting in this episode is he's taking every. Oh, I went back and rewatched the end of the um, third episode because I just wanted to make sure I refreshed myself. But they're taking the two of them to Cybertron. Yeah, it's, Spike's going to Cybertron. Like that's the start that's of this it, that's episode. That's his goal. Being, <laughs> yeah, they were they were like, yeah, yeah, we can come with us, no problem. And I was like, um, I don't know how well you'll fare on Cybertron, but right. it'll be interesting. Question marks uh, across <laughs> the board here. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Optimus's character in this, because uh, I have his, and, and we'll probably talk about this in later episodes, so make sure you check those out as, as they come through. Um, Optimus's character is so ethereal as, as as far as like in this series and in in later movies and series as well um i think that like humanized quote unquote humanizes him a little bit is just like he questions okay. his own leadership and like he's never quite sure and he makes mistakes um i yeah. think that's yeah. interesting but i think critics today look at like oh like optimus wouldn't do that when he like like beheads characters in the movies and stuff and just like completely like uh is like self-defeatist um specifically in um the bumblebee movie and in the beast wars movies where he's like i trapped my people here and i'm going to be kind of like a brooding aggro leader um some of that comes through here in like the early depictions of optimus is like he has a Some lot of, of flaws. Flagellation that we talk about in, in, <laughs> yeah. in Blasphemous. It's Blasphemous, yeah. Even if you can watch it's on the channel, you can check out Blasphemous. We're, we're really plugging here in this this little first set, but uh, I I just find that interesting and maybe like recency bias comes through uh, with the original Bay Formers, like Transformer. I don't I don't does the first. Bayformers movie have a subtitle? I think it was just Transformers. I think it was just called Transformers. Yeah. Optimus's character is the most stoic and one-dimensional in that movie, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. You see, he's pretty one-dimensional. In that and movie. I think people really latched onto it. It's like that's that's my idealized Optimus. Where th- I think well, we that's had like so the- much to work. We had so much to work from. Mm-hmm. You know, we had four four plus seasons of that yeah. this maybe four i think it was four seasons uh and then beast wars and so you kind of well beast wars is they had a lot to technically kind of that is not them. optimus that is optimus primal a completely different being <laughs> the idea of optimus they right, had yes. all of this to a work pr- for. a prime a prime yes a prime exactly yeah, the, the, there seems to be an expectation of a prime. Um, definitely when we, we go into the uh, War Cybertron series, which I, I, I definitely want to cover. Um, he, uh, now, the War Cybertron uh, Optimus sh- Prime. Mm-hmm. It was that a... What was that? 
was that a cartoon? Because I played the video games, but I don't know if it was a cartoon or if it was like what it was beyond the video games. It was supposed to be a multimedia experience. So there was like the video games. I think there's comics and the Netflix series or micro series. I think it's only like four or five episodes or like three oh, arcs. Okay. Super yeah, good. Yeah, no, I never watched that. I only played the video games that I, I, had come out. I think it's the best Transformers consumed media. Mm, okay. I, I think I'll stand on that. I'll, I think I would take several hits on that hill, that that's the best way to kind of get into Transformers. Well, again, they had this to... to to springboard into that. Uh, well, they cover and a lot. And the comic books, too. So they were able to kind of grab all of that media and put it together mm -hmm. into one package. Yeah, because I, I find it really funny. Um, and, and, and I think that's kind of like the, the foundation that we're building this experiment on with Gen Wars is G1 Transformers and Beast Wars has really set a lot of precedence for current era medium because they, they tackle it in the Netflix series and they tackle it in the uh, cinematic universe. So like though, and there's a lot more, there's like, there's Armada, there's uh, Energon, mm. there's uh, oh, I uh, prime, the prime series and all, all, all yep. those and all spark is the new Nickelodeon one. I haven't gotten into that at all. Um, but everything really does circle back to how timeless this original couple of sets are and, yeah, and ha how yeah. much of a, a foundation they've they've set yeah they've been able to flush that story mm -hmm. uh and and really refine it over the years um from this from uh if we're going to also add in beast wars into those things just to the whole transformers as as a whole um obviously we're going to do the the uh, Rise of the Beasts movie, which I still haven't watched yet as of this recording, but we're, it's, we're we, we know it. it's coming, so <laughs> it's it's on the, the docket. Uh, oh yeah, this right here, where they're, um, they trick them to go into the cave. They're, they don't have a way out of the cave. There is no... It, it's a very poor, poor plan. You're right, right. Uh, they didn't show up behind them after they got so far in. Like they're like they lured they're them into the cave. They even dropped the cave in. door, and they were like, "Ha ha! You're trapped in here forever." And you're like, "What about you? You're trapped in here forever too." Right. And we're still uh, seeing only the same four characters. This. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's no no. Actually, when they le when the um, when the Decepticons leave the cave. There's one other Decepticon that we haven't seen throughout this whole episode, and I don't remember who it is. Maybe it's Rumble. Okay. Um, but we don't see him come out of of, of Soundwave here, so I'm not quite sure who it was. But I yeah, hate this. The same this net triggers me. What? They, they the, keep the using nets? these mechanical nets when they like they should be like energy nets in my opinion. I think they used yes. energy nets earlier on. Like this, like coin purse net really actually like really pissed me it off for no like, reason when I was watching like it. Nana's, I was like, Nana's coin purse. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, what the, how does that work? I don't like that. I I, I didn't like it at all. And, and they even gave it like the settling metallic sound. Like it would like they really fleshed oh, yeah. out it this mechanic. Clunks just... to the ground like it's a big metal object. <laughs> It, it makes me unreasonably mad, and and I'm accepting that as as my own thing. But I don't know. And also the but like there's there's an over reliance on physical mechanics when the, it's just like make an energy, make it an energy axe, make it an energy mace, make it an energy. Well, net, yeah, like <laughs> Optimus has got the energy axe, but then right. Megatron's got a a saw blade in his hand. Yeah, and like, and, the, I, and then another gun. More and then gun. another gun. I, I, I like I, that as Megatron's character. It's like, I'm just a gun, but also more guns. I like that. Uh, but it, it's, kind, it's kind of loose on when it's implemented. Um, earlier in the episode where he, like, just, like, gut checks Optimus, and he has his gun, like, up in the mix, like his full arm can, and doesn't, and fire doesn't it. use it. Doesn't fire yeah, it. No. Confuses me. It's only in certain instances. <laughs> right. Just like the the flying, like I, the selective, like just soaring off into space kind of thing, but also. And then so here they gotta shoot their own way out of the cave that they just 
collapsed to oh okay so it's right here where we see oh yeah who's, oh it, uh, I, I that I think looks it's like, like the Rumble. full seeker squad maybe maybe I don't I don't know off the top of my head I'm sure if you know who that is comments um, I'm sure I'll find out and then here you go <laughs> go into gun mode to shoot down the cave again <laughs> right well it also makes me mad because Megatron will also no lip flap but that's okay um, yeah they budget. left him <laughs> just with his mouth open Burn. but um, <laughs> they just shot their way out through a similar yep. rubble pile and they're like yes. No, oh, they're trapped forever. They're they're absolutely hosed. Can't do anything now. We've trapped them forever. We win. They didn't take any of their guns. They didn't do anything. They just left them in the cave. Like they don't have their guns and can't shoot their own way out. Right, because <laughs> Starscream shot out. So yeah. like it, it, there could have been a way. It was like Megatron has to be in gun mode to overpower the rocks. Like there's this absolutely. like Inception that his alt mode is just infinitely more powerful than a normal transformer can blast through. Cool, I'll buy that's into that. They, but that's what they did. They, they didn't up. do it. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. I guess. Barely. Kind of. <gasps> oh my god, an energy net. That's crazy. <laughs> Which I don't even know who would have set that up. I right. guess it would have I guess been Soundwave. Soundwave, yeah. But yeah, that's where they the, what they should be doing is energy things. Yes. Just even just... like um in the I was like the third episode uh when Mirage actually blows up the 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 Decepticon plane or jet. He floats down on a hard metal parachute. One would assume that he could make an some sort of energy parachute. It like literally clunks to the gl ground. It in for like it doesn't fold on itself or anything. Right. Uh, there's also a shot up here where they screw <laughs> up and have two star screams for multiple shots. Oh no! <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't recolor them. It's supposed to be. Uh, Skywarp or whoever that is. Right. One of the other Seekers. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, great heavens. Yeah, they, they like, step into frame and you're like, oh, oops, someone screwed up. <laughs> Oopsie-poo. <laughs> <laughs> this was also very interesting that he has a multiple, like, the bo most perfect sniper shot. Yeah, oh, my God. That's some precision cannon. Art marksmanship there. <laughs> precision of marksmanship. I also have to question that they had a ship mm -hmm. that really looks like the original alt forms for a lot of the Transformers. Which ship are we talking about? The the, the one that like the like the capsule that they were going to take into the Sky Bridge that just oh, exploded. Yes. There. Oh, on Cybertron. Right, they, like they're they're all, they, right here. Look at this. Here's the two Star Screams. <laughs> Whoops. Whoopsie. I'm the leader because it's me and me and also Skywalker. <laughs> I've duplicated myself. But yeah, then we only see three guys leaving, which, I mean, I guess there was only four, maybe five to begin with. So. Yeah. This is also something I've noticed uh, a reoccurring thing, and I'm sure it happens more and more, is <clears throat> they'll say, yay, we got rid of him, we killed him, and then... Optimus is like, no, not. I don't think so. No. I don't believe that to <laughs> not be true. Me. Every time <laughs> we literally just did that, and like, I, I, and this is where I lean on your like experience as far as like Hasbro IPs, because I, I think this happens with like He Man. Uh, is He Man Hasbro? I, I think He Man is Hasbro as well. Uh, he Man yeah. uh, and G.I. Joe. No, that might be Mattel. Te well, it's all Hasbro yeah. now, baby. So <laughs> uh, It's all Hasbro now. <laughs> um, he Man, products of the time. He Man, yeah. G.I. Joe, Transformers. It, it feels like an, an intentional, like, gimmicky aesthetic. Well, the, 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 Mattel's owned by Hasbro now. Yes? Question mark? Are they? Very pretty sure. Know. Pretty sure. Um, is Mattel owned by Hasbro? Uh, 
Hasbro made an offer to take over offer for Mattel at Mattel's worth. Yeah. So I rejected the offer. No, I nope. think we're okay. still separate. Well, oh. For so now. A merger between Mattel and Hasbro has been speculated for years, but yeah, so no. I'm predicting the future. <laughs> this will age like a fine wine in like five or six years, so I'll be 100% correct. Um, to me, original G-War Transformers falls into that same really unpolished state that we're seeing here where we're like things don't make sense we got coloring errors and what makes me mad is that when you look at pieces today they would never get away with those kind of errors they would never get away with those kind of story elements and what kind of like continuity m- issues like that yeah 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 yeah, it, it, yeah I mean, it's... you got a lot of eyes working on a project like even when um working at the animation studio that I worked at, you know, there was, we'll say 20 people working on different elements of it. And then we'd all sit in a room together and watch it. And many, many, many sets of eyes went on everything. And I was the last line of defense before it went out the door. And so even if I like, I don't know if anything slipped past me, but it very well could have, but for the most part, with all the eyes looking at it, and then my final set of eyes, I was always like, hey, there's this one one thing. Let's fix that before before it goes out the door so we don't have this product where we, we have two star screams. It, that's not – it happens twice. That same shot they reused, so you see the same star screams walk up, and I'm like – you're reusing shots, and you didn't do it right. <laughs> Jeez, Louise! What the hell, guys? Oh my lord! It was the '80s. It was a different time. <laughs> a different time. Speaking of having <laughs> eyes on stuff, that's the end of the episode. We appreciate you for watching all the way through and watching along with us on this Transformers journey, this generational conflict, the Gen Wars between generation x and the millennials so we appreciate the likes and subscribe checking out the funky store on both channels funky games and fire hazard 508 creations yes yes. nick sign us off so we can go into the next episode (gasps) oh what are we got next oh that would be a beast wars so get over to funky games and come watch episode four with us over there so i can get to slam some beast wars i mean say nice things about beast wars Bowling, i get love beast here. wars the the <laughs> vastly superior product the vastly superior transformers product as you call it yes yes truly truly a, a, academy award winning emmy okay. award oh emmy award one of those things. it's it's award winning piece of okay, okay. uh television cinema so check that out and we'll see you in the next one bye See ya. We are back with Gen Wars, a combative conversation between Gen X and the awful, no good, horrible, downright dastardly millennials. When we're talking about Transformers, we're going to watch Beast Wars Episode 4. If you haven't watched all the other content, we're doing a watch along of both Generation 1 Transformers over on Nick's channel. Hey, Nick. Hey. He's on Fire Hazard 508 Creations. He makes That's me. play things into display things. Uh, but today we're talking about Transformers. Uh, he's going to give us a little rundown, and we're going to play through this episode, Episode 4 of Beast Wars. But if you haven't watched Episode 4 of G1, get over to my channel. Down the bottom, you can see where you're supposed to go. Uh, and watch that first, and then come back here, and then watch this. We have a very interesting episode, and I'm going to give us a little countdown uh, so you can watch along. Uh, Links are also provided in the description uh, for the places that you can watch them legitimately and not get in trouble for. Uh, (laughs) Thanks, YouTube, for all that you provide. (laughs) Yes, exactly. I'm going to do this on Go, and we can get our get our watch along on 
You ready, Steven? I'm born ready. All right. All right, so we're going to go and go. So three, two, one, go. Let's go. And I will have to admit that I have so much confidence in this series and my retention of this uh, show that I'm going in blind on this one. I only oh. watched, I only pre-screened G1 <laughs> for any kind of conversation. So any kind of uh, commentary that I have or any rebuttals that I have for Nick are completely off the cuff because I have, okay. that, I have that confidence that this is We're the vastly the superior product. Young Steven's memory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I, I will say Young Steven watched this a lot. A lot, okay, a lot. Okay. This was this was my sauce, and I did do a fairly recent watch through, um, probably about two years ago. Just just a real watch, okay. to, 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 which kind of kicked off this because we were having conversations about like, you know, Beast Wars is probably better, and then you know, <laughs> the, the Gen Wars yeah, was born. That's how this whole <laughs> this whole series came about. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did watch G One a lot as a kid but when it was only on TV so it was not in order it was all over the place like so I caught it when I caught it and I did not see it from beginning to end and I have not seen it from beginning to end I think ever I think this is the first time I'm watching it all from beginning to end yeah and my, my original so experience whole... with Beast Wars was just like catch it on cable when I could and my my pr- most recent watch through was beginning to end and an entire series that I had not seen before with Beast Machines. So, the, like, I'm I, I'm hot to trot on on, on this show. And the, then, uh, the the Beast Wars movies was announced like way after I had finished watching, and I was like, yes, there's more, there's more like me out here that knows <laughs> that knows the true identity of of, of Transformers and, and and the vastly superior product. I am excited to watch. The, the the beast war the rise of the beasts uh mm-hmm. i did watch we we, we are going to talk about bumblebee not in this episode we're going to do a, spe- a specifically dedicated episode to bumblebee and then to uh rise of the beasts so I'm, I'm i'm checking things off my list as we get to them so we needed to start this back up and get back into this first and then we're going to hit hit and uh, get into those movies Big groove, uh, big groove energy. <laughs> this was also quite. Uh, when I was watching, they're like, "Hey, be careful! Is this bomb is gonna blow up. Don't be." They're intricately putting it together. It just rolls off, and then Optimus is just tossing it around like it's nothing. He's like, "Yeah, no problem." Because because Optimus uh, Primal is a beast. <laughs> he is a beast. This is true. <laughs> He's got a couple things in this episode that I was like, "Oh, look at that! Look at that!" I'm, I'll I'll point him out when we just just some some uh, well, what we talked about in the first episode um, of him being um, irresponsible, I guess, or making the irresponsible call. Maybe that's what it is. I guess he didn't know. We'll get to it. Fledgling we'll, we'll leadership. Yes. Exactly. Ooh, I just turned mine up. Um, but yeah, like that that leadership call that you're like, I don't know if that was the right call to make. Um, especially once he knows all the information. Right. Defeating them does not mean we have to annihilate them. You seem to have trouble understanding that. There's a this was a very interesting relationship here between that they've been going on between the two of them. Um I, I, I really enjoy like the Dinobot and Starscream like replacement because because you look at like Starscream and he seems kind of like a goober like I'm going to be leader and where Dinobots like I have legitimate reasons that I think that I am superior mm. in thinking and like a, a more cunning version of Starscream and I really really like that take of 100% that he is much much more I would say he's much more cunning where Starscream is a little I guess he'll t- take advan- he takes more advantage of the situation uh, which is actually going to be interesting moving forward now that Megatron's not on planet anymore yes uh, that he gets to kind of 
uh, experience being the leader and what happens with that. Yeah, like the actual like taste of leadership is 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 coming yeah. up, which he hasn't had. He's kind of like goobery, like I'm the leader now. They've died. <laughs> Megatron is dead, and I'm the leader now. Like this is the first yeah, time they just <laughs> all make the assumption that he's dead and not that the thing actually worked, like the, the transport there. <laughs> right. Well, it, and. Histo- like, because they've done it like two or three times already in the the four episodes, and Megatron's like, no, oh yeah, cool. yes. yeah, yeah. They keep kill- er, <laughs> killing him off, oh, you know. Him and it doesn't really, doesn't really. You know, you're like, no, just wait, find out if you actually did it first. And I, I really, really like the group, like dynamics that Transformer has set precedence for going forward in pretty much any sci-fi like ship group setting so you've got the leader which has different varying levels of respect so he's either a new Mm -hmm. leader and trying to set his way or like a a super veteran leader that everyone is supposed to respect and then you have like the dissenting like pseudo like direct rapport or lieutenant that's like either like shifty or like a usurper of some kind and then you've got like the new hot shot lieutenant that's like supposed to be a foil that would be cheetor here hot shot (laughs) bumblebee (laughs) cheetor yes true true Mm -hmm. uh watched the transformation because they showed his transformation in slow motion and it doesn't make it easier to watch every time. It yeah. is just this separation of the body, and he comes, and you're like, ugh. It's weird and gross. <laughs> they did a great job of interpreting the toys. Um, I really liked, um, you haven't seen the movie, but the movie does no. push them more mechanical, and they do it okay. later in okay. Beast Machines and stuff. Um, I would love There's to somebody- see... Mm-hmm. Somebody else's transformation in a, in a little bit that I point, I got to point out, and it's like I actually need I want to hear your opinion on because I'm assuming you had the toy when we get to it. I'll I'll point oh, yeah. it out. Um, but it's it's yeah, like I said, it doesn't get easier every time I watch it. And I actually did an unboxing of uh, Super Seven had a um, GI Joe of Snake Eyes. Uh, Snake Eyes and Timber package. Uh, there was a malfunction in the, the gluing process of Timber, so when I started to move him, the glue broke loose, and it essentially did what Cheetor did, and just the whole figure separated in the middle. <laughs> I was like, oh yes. no! <laughs> so I had to send it back, unfortunately. Oh, rest in peace. Uh, I also... They're robots. They understand electricity and lightning but they're running around with these metal rods just, or Cheetor's running around with these metal rods and just getting wrecked by lightning. <laughs> well, the, lean, he's like, the whole good. episode is about his hubris and like, I'm like, it's, I'm, 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 like, I'm a so robot. I can, hubris. exactly. <laughs> like, like that's, that's whole, that's Cheetor's art is just like accepting his place in life and like, kind of like taking it on the chin when his hubris like claps back at him. I, and, yeah. and, and and that is a trope that we see in sci-fi a lot. It's like the young gun, like hot, like I, I keep saying hot shot, but that's that's where the term. That, that's what it is. That's why they I mean, call. He kept telling him. <laughs> he kept telling him, "Don't go, don't go. We're we don't want." And he's like, "Nah, nah, I got it, I got it." And right, then and then Dinobots is like, "You should totally go because <laughs> like." <laughs> and now gets zapped again. Yep. <laughs> And this was this I found interesting. Like we, we don't we get this like baseline explanation of this after the fact, but the teleporting, like the lightning, just kind of teleports them around, and you're like, well, I guess it's not a great explanation. Oh, it's right here. They cheat this animation, this transformation where he just has his wing over and his yeah. body just comes out of nowhere. Yeah. I, I, I'm assuming you had the toy. Yeah, Pterosaur has... So, so basically the wings would kind of sit on his back. It's just a fold-over animation. So I think... Okay. I, I, I would say that Pterosaur was 
probably the worst adaptation to okay. here. Um, they kind of like goof some of it to give him a more humanoid, streamlined look. Basically, a majority he certainly of does. the 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 ter- pterodactyl form would be on his back. Um, they they meld okay. some of it to his arms, which wasn't true. Like his arms and f- like his human side was kind of like clapped on the back, is essentially. So they kind of like morphed it down. Like his wings weren't like these streamlined hooks and stuff on him. They were just on his back suspended. So I see why they did it for rigging reasons on the 3D model, but it, it's definitely probably the worst toy to screen adaptation. I kind of figured that because he's he's too small, like his body is too small, and then he's got these he was long a small thin wings. figure. Uh, I can't remember oh, the, he, uh, the conventions that they did with uh, Transformers, but it, it's like the, the the small class, which was like the four inch class or something like that. Okay, so they there were scale size differentials between. Between them, okay. Yeah. So Even like, though they kind of all look roughly the same size um, in the show. Yeah, I, I where G1 Transformers is egregious in their size and their scaling, like eh, you know. Whatever. But there were, but there were, uh, we'll call them large, medium, and small Transformers. Like Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper were small. Ratchet and Ironhide were kind of that mid, that mid size, and then. Optimus and Megatron were the large, the the grande. Yeah, yeah. Like the like, like there's all those classifications on size, but G1 Transformers just throws it to the window in, in certain scenes. Um, specific, well, I, so I will specifically, I will yeah. say like Megatron's alt form, like transformation, and is just horrible. Soundwave. And Soundwave, Soundwave who's yeah. a a boombox this big <laughs> right yeah yeah that that's egregious um this one they fudge it a little bit um like um scorpinox and pterosaur vastly different figure sizes like about okay. as extreme as you can get um megatron being a, a larger size um but like scorpinox and optimus primal about the same size i i i, okay. I think yeah, I think Megatron was the largest Beast Wars line besides characters that are introduced later that I'm not going to spoil. Um, okay. <laughs> Megatron seems pretty big. I mean, he is a T-Rex. He's so. a huge figure. I will have to grab some of my figures for later episodes of the show from my parents' house. Um, my kids will be big upsetty that they're not there, but we'll deal with that crossword when we get there. Um <laughs> But there, there is a vast size difference. Um, I'm surprised in, you don't have them figures. back there and all the. the stuff I know, I got. know. I, I have, I have Optimus, uh, my Red Series Optimus and stuff like that. Mm. Though th- that's more uh, function over form, uh, I will say. Oh, okay. As much as I would love <laughs> to just get out and, and play with my Transformers on a day-to-day basis, um, I don't have. I don't, too many left. I got some. Ooh, I got some back there. Some some reissues back there on the nice. shelf. Nice, nice. I I would say that the the updated Beast Wars toys are very delectable, and and they definitely pry my wallet open on many occasion. That I just want to get a lot of them. There's a couple that I've there's a couple that I've seen that I'm like, uh, I'm, I was this close to buying them. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't. Again, this wasn't my show, so uh, do I buy something that is more akin to the G1 um, or maybe even a later kind of modified version of that or do I would I you know I think Rhinox was one of the ones that I looked at and went oh that's that's a pretty nice figure that's a nice figure (laughs) yeah Rhinox is such a cool kit as well with like the double like quad barrel machine guns and like it's a fun toy with the maces on them <laughs> like it's just silly. Oh, is I didn't even realize he had all that. Mm. Uh, this, this was something. <laughs> Do Dinobots poop? Does everybody poop? Because he puts them in this seemingly toilet situation and it flushes <laughs> like a toilet. Hey, what are you doing? Like if you It's just waste disposal. There's lots of different kinds of waste. 
That sounds like a toilet. <laughs> we all poop. <laughs> Everybody poops. That's the thing. Everybody poops. I'm a child. <laughs> I love. I, I I would say sound the, effect. <laughs> the sound effect when he l lands, just this thud is in the little puff of smoke is perfect. It's perfect. I I, the, I love the Optimus Primal doing this is always funny. He's trying to like. He's trying to put his hands on his hips. It just doesn't really work, though. <laughs> they definitely push the rigs very far in this show. Um, oh, yeah. So far. So far. <laughs> I, I love every scene where Dinobot and Pterosaur are interacting because they are the two components of Starscream split into two different characters. Like Yes. Pterosaur mm -hmm. is definitely dumb. He's He seems to be an idiot. Right, exactly. He seems to be the idiotic version or the idiotic side Half, of Starscream. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Starscream uh, in original G1 and I think going through this uh, this uh, experiment with you has really highlighted how original Starscream was a really bad character. Like, he's just like kind of d dumb and, and later iterations give him the more conniving aspects that we see here in Dinobot and I will... That right there. Sorry, that was the look that Optimus Prime was like, huh? Excuse me? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I don't know if I like that. <laughs> and this um, goes. Yes, you're not wrong there. How impactful this show is as a like the earliest CGI besides reboot for mm -hmm. like what they could get away with in a show because you can't do all of those facial expressions in G1 Transformers. You couldn't get away yeah. with like really like snappy like quick moments because you would have to do that through dialogue or through some other kind of engagement to get that same vibe across. So just yeah. something that the technology provides in this show that wasn't available to cuz cuz you see that in later iterations of G1 Transformer reboot so specifically in War Cybertron, where they have some more facial rigging on the characters, and, and, and that is a, a CGI product. So the, this yeah. set yeah, the standard were... for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's definitely a lot of limitations in G1. Uh, just, I mean, we saw it. You didn't even have. They just were like, yeah, don't put any lip flap in there. Just, just let them be. And, and yeah, this one they you know, they they added. A, there was more. Um, they had to do more. I guess they kind of had to do more. I mean, a gorilla and a, a raptor. A, a, a raptor only have so much mouth movements they can do. They have to emote with their head and bodies and kind of do everything. This was, that was this. He comes in. Okay, first off, it's on a floppy disk. <laughs> yes. Hilarious. Spice. <laughs> and then he throws it like it's a disc. Like, I don't have, like, you got some sticky notes. You just yeah, the, the, the swings the it like, he's like, yeah, no problem. I got this. And it just ricochets off and doesn't doesn't even land remotely close. I love it. it, it, it it's good. It's good. Good storytelling. But it, I guess that lends, lends to the his hubris and thinking he's uh, he's hot. He's hot. Uh, a hot shot. Hot, to hot shot from Transformers Armada. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like it's a trope that they set. But it works. It works. It, it definitely sets that up nicely. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, la I laughed when I, I he just walks in and just throws it at it and just, <laughs> it just completely off. biffs it. <laughs> Come on, you'd rather be baked. Ten. Ooh, the bluff. And again, this goes into hubris. Like, I'm just, I'm just gonna bluff my way out of this. But also, I need to get in this mix. <laughs> yeah, he just smashes them out of the way. And, and I was, I was two seconds. I was waiting for a pterosaur just to blow up. Like, the, the Predacons take an L and lose <laughs> one just for that. But. Uh, they, I didn't think they were doing it. I was kind of hoping they would, though. <laughs> nice. And then this, where he just splats down. <laughs> so that's the thing. Uh, obviously, Slag was a, an original Dinobot, and they just used Slag as kind of a, a catch-all. <laughs> yeah, swear. <laughs> swear, I guess, yeah. Miss <laughs> me? 
God. I also love just like because this really does fall like Monster of the Week vibe um, of the era, and it's just like Cheetor like got all this set up, and then ended up like because if that bomb went off and they just blew up the set like big win like massive W, and he's like, oh, you know what? Oops, I don't want to well, get so gibbed. That, <laughs> so that was where the 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 um, the bad decision making on Optimus's Prime was because. Or Optimus is uh, his decision making about that because he didn't know Cheetor was there, but he also was like, "I don't want to kill them." He's like, even though they're like, "Yeah, we need to destroy, them. well, destroy them or keep them at bay, capture." There you go. Um, but he's like, "Sure, send the send the bomb through the thing," and he made that decision, which probably wasn't the right one, against his better judgment. Like just like sending Spike out to go on well, a mission that probably was going to get him killed or captured. <laughs> well, with, within storytelling, we're still looking at Dinobot as bad influence. He influenced yes. Cheetor to like go do that influence. stuff, and and then he. It, it is also to show that like Cheetor isn't so naive that he's just susceptible to anything. But Dinobot's yeah. influence will even impact Optimus. Like it's 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 to show how cunning he is. It, it, it's a great setup for for later things. It's. Dinobot is very manipulative, very cunning, and he is setting out to achieve very specific goals. And if yeah. he is not shown as capable of doing that, which is where he has improved on the Starscream character, like Starscream is like pseudo manipulative and tries to achieve specific and things, fails it a lot, and fails, fails a lot. A lot. <laughs> so, it, it, and we'll see it later with Pterosaur, like who embodies more of the Starscream personality, mm -hmm. um, and 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 to some extent, Waspinator does that as well. Um, it, it it just sets. A lot of like, oh, I remember in G1 Transformers when those things were going <laughs> on. It, it, it's a good callback, but also improving like objectively better characters uh, as we go throughout the series of Beast Wars. Yeah, they, uh, there was the it's the they have that uh, we were, like we said before that ability to jump off from those characters to improve on them to make tell that better story to maybe separate out the two Starscream to have the foil character and then the character who's more cunning and uh, have them play off each other or I mean like they they made that little pact and then he was like goodbye <laughs> send him out the send him out the toilet there <laughs> looking at Beast Wars and G1 Transformers where we are in the narrative yes as far as progression goes I I, I think G1 is falling into more of a serialized cable show where it's like we kind of got to rehash we kind of retread the same ground um so far they are yeah they have at the moment yeah they're not, we're not progressing the story where in beast wars early on we're really focusing on a lot of character development because we're only four episodes in but we've gotten really yeah. good character development for all, almost six characters we have rat trap we have tarantulas we have optimus primal we have megatron we have pterosaur cheetor and dinobot like yeah that's a lot yeah. of ground cover. i keep forget like i keep i forget and every time you say dinobot i'm like the, all the guys, because we get to, that's coming right. up in a the few Dinobots, of yeah, yeah, Grimlock, yeah, yeah, and all yeah. them different characters. Dinobot, yes, the Dinobot Raptor, Raptor Tron, or yes. whatever. But Din Dinobot is <laughs> Dinobot yeah. is one of the best characters out of Beast Wars, as far as I'm he is, concerned. He is pretty, pretty excellent so far. I'm, it, I'm it, enjoying like his his cunning. That he's... The episode that got the award is focused around him, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not setting groundwork okay. for that at all. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. They have set up a lot of characters and development of those characters in four episodes where G1 is mainly focused on uh, Optimus and Megatron. 
maybe a little bit of Bumblebee, but other than that, like it's just a matter of the warring factions and we're kind of just moving through it and all the other Autobots or maybe, maybe Starscream. And I mean, we're, we're focusing on them, but we're not getting a lot of backstory on them. Right. Um, so yeah, they're just kind of there and pushing the story along uh, and not developing that yet. I'm assuming that happens again. I don't remember. So we'll have to see. <laughs> well, we will see in future episodes of Gen Wars yes. where we are having a combative conversation about Transformers between Gen X and Millennials. We appreciate all the likes and subscribes, all of the comments. Tell us where we're wrong. Tell us where we're right. Uh, give us your opinion. We, let, we, we love that. Put that down below in the comments. Um, and you can go to the Funky Store, Funky.Store, where there's merch. Check Get all of that, that merch. out. Get that merch. It helps both of our channels. Funky Games yes, and Firehazard 508 Creation. So do all the things, all of the places. Keep tuned in for Gen Wars. We're, we're expanding. We're doing a whole bunch of things with Transformers and other IPs. Uh, it's coming soon. Um, Nick, give us the big goodbyes. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And um, keep, keep tuned in for episode five of both g1 and beast wars and we're going to do some of the movies too so we're going to see those soon thank you everybody and bye-bye bye, -bye. Uh, bye.